This is Kim Newlove, host of the Pharmacist's Voice podcast. Thank you for joining me for episode 99. If you're new to the show, welcome. I alternate solo shows and interview shows. The solo shows are about my career change from pharmacist to voice actor, and the interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate, educate, or entertain. My website is thepharmacistvoice.com. Just a quick listener's note before we get started. I am getting over a cold, and during this interview today, it was a whole lot worse. I apologize for sounding stuffy, but there are no sick days in podcasting, so on with the show. Today's episode is an interview with Rhonda Phillips. Rhonda is a voiceover actor, voiceover performance coach, and host of the monthly webinar series, Late Night Secrets for Voiceover Success. I have had a number of questions from podcast listeners and social media about how to get into voiceover. I refer lots of people to Rhonda, so I invited Rhonda to come on the podcast today to share her thoughts on the topic. Rhonda has been a full-time voiceover actor for the past 16 years. Her voice has been heard everywhere, from national milk campaigns to Las Vegas casinos to major furniture brands. She's voiced thousands of television and radio commercials, as well as hundreds of e-learning modules and on-hold campaigns. She's also a beginner performance and business coach for aspiring new voiceover talents. Rhonda began her speaking career by teaching effective speaking classes and traveling as a public speaker. She then turned to broadcast radio, where she and her morning show partner held a number one comedy hot AC morning show. When she's not working, she enjoys the great outdoors in Western Colorado with her husband and Yellow Lab. If you want to learn how to get started in voiceover, you will love this interview. Without further ado, here's my interview with Rhonda Phillips. Hi, Rhonda. Welcome to the Pharmacist Voice Podcast. How are you? Oh, so good, Kim. Thanks for inviting me. This is so exciting. Oh, it's great to have you. This is going to be fun. I've been wanting to have you on the show for a couple of months already, and today's the day. (laughs) Today is the day we both woke up, and ta-da, podcast time. (laughs) Yes. Well, I have had a question from a number of listeners about how do I get started in voiceover, and I know that you are a voice actor, you are a performance coach for voiceover, and you have a wonderful webinar series, which I love, called Late Night Secrets. We're going to talk about all three of those, but I would love to start with talking about coaching and how does someone get into voiceover? Oh, that is the secret, right? That's the magical question. Uh, There's lots of different ways for actually people to get into voiceover. First thing I say to do is research. Research research. You cannot do enough research. What do you need to research, you ask? Well, first of all, I would start researching what's current, what's happening, and what's out there. So shopping around, going and finding some professional voiceover folks to listen to. They can go to your website. They can go to my website. Um, There's tons of professional voice actors out there living the life. And so go and listen to a lot of demos. Listen to commercial demos if that's, you know, the road that you think you want to take. Um, Listen to their e-learning demos or their explainer explainer demos and start really listening to the difference of what the commercial sounds like, what the e-learning sounds like, and the different uh, nuances. There are courses galore. I say buyer beware. There, you know, (laughs) there are courses, there are are people that say, I will teach you three lessons and we're going to get a demo going. Run away. Don't, don't, (laughs) don't buy into that because, um, you know, I've been doing voiceover professionally for about 16 years now ish. Um, And when I first started, there wasn't a lot of resources out there you know, really. So I felt like I swam in a very deep pool and I'm really glad I didn't drown. (laughs) I did have some people to help me um, when I first started out because I was in radio and I, there was a professional voice actor on staff. And so he really did show me a lot of, of the ropes on, and what he did. Um, But once you get your research down and you start figuring out, okay, 
I, I think this is the avenue that I might like to explore. Then you can start, um, you know, reach out to somebody like me. I am uh, a newbie coach. That's what I specialize in. So I help people navigate not only learning the performance side of things, which is a huge piece of the puzzle, you have to learn the business side of things. Because as you know, Kim, how much time do we actually spend in the studio doing voiceover work that we're getting paid for? Uh, I'd like to say I'm in there all day, every day. Yes, but we're not. You know, 80% of our time, sometimes even more than that, is spent at the desk, finding the work and nurturing the clients and, and keeping those clients and then doing the job. So <laughs> a ton of it is just uh, work, just sitting at your desk and, and working. It's not all of the glamour and glitz of being in the studio all day long. Yeah. And auditioning too. Auditioning is a huge part yes. of the job. Absolutely. Auditioning every every single day. Uh, I have a kind of a checklist that I talk to people about initially. Up, and I do have the course introduction to voiceover.com. It's a three-hour self-paced course that people can explore. And in that course, I do kind of kind of go over the whole thing about how to get into voiceover, meaning we start with the research. Uh, and, and then you can get into some one-on-one -on -one coaching. A lot of coaches have group coaching situations. Uh, Larry Hudson has his uh, weekly workouts. I think they're full right now. I think he mentioned last time, but you can always check with Larry Hudson at VO Heaven. Um, I know you mentioned him in a previous podcast as well. He's a great teacher and coach. Um, but to, to really start thinking about it as a business. So what do you have to do to start a business? Any business. You have to get your finances in order first. Because you can go buy a USB $99 microphone, plug it into your computer, and talk into it. Doesn't make you a voiceover necessarily person <laughs> just by doing that. So you can get in on a dime, but to really get in, you do have to have some money saved. And, and I think that's something that people don't really think about. Some people are like, well, how much does it really cost? Well, that's opening Pandora's box right there. <laughs> yes, rabbit holes, right? Because everybody will tell you something a little differently. I usually tell my students that uh, if they're serious about this and they want to make this their full-time career, five ten thousand dollars $10,000 is a good starting point. Don't swallow your tongue, everyone. You don't have to, to have a slush fund like that to get started. But I'm going to run through things really fast. I'm going to take a big breath and I'm just going to kind of uh, spit out some stuff that you're going to have to think about. Okay, ready? Online courses, business plans, mission statements, uh, budget for starting, your marketing, your branding, your logo work, your website design, and getting that whole team of people together to get all that stuff done. Of course, the professional stuff, you're going to need a quality home-built studio or a purchased studio, which starts, you know, those can run five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 itself if you decide. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can build a home studio pillow fort. A lot of us have done that. Um, but then you're going to need all your equipment. Microphones start at $99 USBs, goes up to $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 Neumanns, goes up even higher than that if you're talking, you know, nicer microphones. You can get started, though, with a mic that's two, or $300 for sure. Your interface to plug your microphone in, your audio recording software, either purchase. I know you talked about that in episode 92. You talked about Audacity, Twisted Wave, Reaper, Studio One, Adobe Audition. I think you named even more than that. There were seven of them. Yep. Yeah. Some are better for podcasting than they are for VO. Right. I personally am an Adobe Audition fan. Um, that's because I used it 100 years ago in radio and I've just kept it around all these years. Uh, Adobe Audition um, is a monthly fee that I pay. Twisted Wave you can buy. It's less expensive. And Audacity, of course, is free. So it's a good way to start practicing, you know, reading your voice. And once you have all of the all of that down, you have to learn how to use it. And that can also take you time, energy, effort, money, because editing is a skill that you have to have. There's no question. Um, unless you have more than that $10,000 slush fund and you can 
pay somebody to edit all your stuff, which eventually would be great. You have to learn your DAW. And that's, it's, it's not impossible, but I think people get stuck by tech fear. You know, just that, oh my gosh, it looks overwhelming. I'm not sure I can do this, right? But that's part of it. You have to learn how to do all that and make yourself sound good and learn how to edit out your mistakes. Not only that, to sweeten your audio, you know, t- to make sure your noise floor isn't crazy and all, all those kinds of things. You need a good listening environment. So that might be a really good computer. So if you don't have a great computer, it doesn't have to be a hard, you know, like a Mac or a PC. It can be a laptop. It can, you know, any of that kind of thing. These things, you know, headphones that I'm wearing now are about $100, $100 or so for good headphones. And then you start your your coaching. Well, coaching's not cheap. It, it's just not because you're working with top professionals. Um, you can get coaches from everything from $50 an hour, which I don't know who really does that, up to $300 an hour. $300 an hour. That's a lot of money. But once you hit a once you hit a certain plateau though, it's just like what I always tell people, they ask me um, about coaching, how long you have to coach and all of those things. And do I really need a coach? The way I look at it, it's the Olympic trials right now. The best people in the world have a coach by their side. Why wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. I have people that I call on because <laughs> I've been doing this for 16 years. I know everything. I don't know. I don't know everything. <laughs> I saw, I call up people and say, oh, man, I'm really struggling with this line or I'm really struggling with this or I'm having a hard time getting into this character. So I have people that I call too. Branding and logos, super important. You know, I've, I've had Celia Siegel on Late Night Secrets with her amazing uh, voiceover achiever book. Uh Because your brand is really important and it's not cheap to get a great brand. Logo, you know, you can hire somebody cheap to do your logo, but you got to get those ideas, you know, and get all that stuff done. Media presence, uh, social media presence on all the different platforms, which we've (laughs) talked about a little bit, you and I, uh, off mic earlier about how I need to be better at social media. (laughs) Yeah, we all have our, the thorn in my side and social media is mine. Uh, Business cards invoicing, CRM, which is a customer um, relationship management tool to keep track of your clients once you find them, um, or keep track of how to reach back out to clients once you've reached, you know, you need a reminder system. Um, Protecting yourself legally, so getting your sole proprietorship, your LLC, if you decide to go that way. Uh, Talking about contracts, I always say buy the the book VO Legal, V O yes. Legal with Rob Siglin Paglia. Um, it has tons of contracts. It has tons of language that's easy to understand. If you use my name at checkout, you save five dollars. Oh, okay. I know, right? Um, and so learning how to set your rates. The GVAA rate guide, the Global Voice Acting Academy rate guide is a bl- uh, great place to do that. Um, and there's a replay on Late Night Secrets of David Toback that you could purchase that teaches you all about the rate guide and how to use it so that you know you know how to set your rates. Networking, cover letters, time management skills, organizational skills, memberships, yearly conferences, pay-to-play sites, support groups, stand-up groups, meet-up groups. So <laughs> what does it take to get into voiceover? <laughs> I didn't mean to blow anybody's mind just now, but this is the big picture. So I think sometimes when people walk in, they're narrowly focused and I need to make some money and I can do this because everybody's told me I have a great voice. We all have a great voice. Don't don't we? Sure. I, I'm always saying, when's the last time somebody came up to you and said, hey, Kim, how you doing? And you're like, Ugh. I hope they never <laughs> talked. Oh, their voice. Their voice is awful. So, yeah, some people, I think, have a certain wonderful tone and inflection. It makes them a nice candidate for voiceover. But you still have to just learn to use, learn how to use it, you know, to get you where you need to go. I know I just went off the rails there on all the things. So, hey, Kim, you want to jump back in here? (laughs) (laughs) No, this is exactly what I was hoping for because there is so much to getting into voiceover and having a coach such as yourself to explain it and break it down into little pieces and parts and uh, chapters that you really need to study and go through and the time you need to take to, to grow. 
as a performer, you need to hear this from somebody. As much as I appreciate my listeners and people reaching out to me on social media to ask, how do I get into voiceover? One of the first things I do is say, go talk to Rhonda. (laughs) Because (laughs) even though I have not coached with you, Rhonda, I have found that you are one of the people out there in the voiceover industry that people recommend most because oh. you you love working with newbies. Everybody says I do. Go to Rhonda. And I wish I honestly I I love Nancy Wolfson. That is who I started with. But that's probably not the best person to start with because Nancy is wonderful. I don't want to badmouth Nancy, but she gets right into the performance. And she is top notch everything but you're you're right she works with top top pros i mean she's the one that can dial in everything to 100% yes for me what i'm trying to dial in is getting you used to listening to the sound of your own voice learning your own musicality you know um everybody starts out somewhere yes for sure but i i think i break it down to the bottom level of where you need to get on the elevator instead of starting, you know, 10 rows up. So we, you just have to learn the very basics uh, of nuance, pacing, inflection, uh, body language, facial expression, a pacing tone. That's all. <laughs> just that. That's a, not much. Which is a lot. <laughs> So you wake up, have a cup of coffee, be a pro voice actor. <laughs> um, but for me, you know why I love newbies so much? I, I just, I love teaching. I've been a teacher since I, gosh, since I can remember, since I was young. Uh, I started teaching effective speaking when I was about 21, probably, because I was in a, a young group of young women entrepreneurs. And... You know, I was always the kid in class that raised their hand, though, when they would say, um, so does anyone want to read chapter three aloud? And everybody else is going like, uh, divert your eyes. I'm like, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, I'll read. Uh, <laughs> so that kind of has helped me out. But it's really important to find a coach when you're first starting out. Uh, and I'm not saying it has to be me. There's a lot of amazing coaches out there that work with newbies that can just kind of explain to you all of these things that you have to do and make you understand that this is not going to happen tomorrow. Yes. It, you know, some people want to fast track. I've had, I've had people call me up to say, all right, I just lost my job. Uh, I want to be a voice actor. I've done my research. I understand. I bought the equipment, uh, all the things but they need to start making money next week. That That's, that's tough. It's kind of like saying, well, I want to be a farmer. I plowed the field and watered it. So where's my corn? Yeah. <laughs> it takes a that, minute to that's nurture a tough that. position to be in, to have to make money tomorrow. And you don't even know the industry. There's, there's a lot to know. And that's, yeah. I get a little overwhelmed just trying to explain it to people. And I, again, I appreciate you being here to explain that. Well, yeah, cuz money is money is here, guys. The voiceover world is ginormous, which is definitely a word. Is it in the <laughs> dictionary it should be if it's not ginormous. Um because if we look at it, so many people really just consider voiceover commercial because what do we hear all day every day? All day every day, commercials for something. You're listening to stuff even when you don't know you're listening to stuff. You know, that YouTube video that you wanted to see, you probably had to suffer through three to four seconds of uh, an ad unless you forgot (laughs) and you just listened to the whole thing or you were actually interested, you know, in it. Um, But it's, it. I tell people um, that want to walk in the door and start making money immediately, good luck. I, I wish you the luck and I want to give you a hug and I want to tell you it's going to be okay and that you're going to do it. But in reality, it's my job to say it's probably best not to quit your day job. It's probably best to 
you know, do that and do this in the evenings and the weekends until you kind of learn the ropes just a little bit. Um, you know, the next question after, how do you get into voiceover? I, and people say, how do I break into voiceover? My whole thing is it's not a business. You're not a, you're not a thief. You're not going to break in. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, because yeah, I don't think you can, anybody can break into any industry, really. It's just all diligence learning and, you know, doing <laughs> doing the things in the right steps that you're supposed to be doing. Uh, I think I probably went on a tangent there. But my, my main thing here is you're, I don't want people to think they're going to come in, buy their USB mic, join a pay-to-play site, and start making cash straight away. Because that will just lead you to heartache. Now, can you do that? Can you make money? Absolutely. Can you use pay-to-play sites to get where you need to go? Sure, if that's the avenue that you'd like to go. Of course, we all know if you open Facebook, there's 16 schools of thought on that. Yes. What school do you go to? I don't know. Who do you listen to? You're, I don't know. <laughs> Just be careful to who you're listening to, I, I guess, when it comes to social media. Yes. I always say find people you trust and listen to them. But on the way to finding people that you trust, you have to vet them. You have to mm -hmm. find out where did they get their training? Have they achieved a certain amount of success? You know, one thing that you could talk about is how does anybody know who's the right coach for them? That's also another thing. Ask your friends. Facebook can be a great source of information if you use the little search bar within groups. I know other people, uh, they'll just really get on you if you go in and start asking random questions without kind of reading through the questions uh, yes. uh, beforehand. But, and like I said, you're going to get opinions from, from everybody. I think it's really important to go to your coach once before you sign up for, you know, an entire six-week program or something like that. Um, I do consultations with people before I start coaching with them so that, I just kind of have an understanding of who they are, where they're coming from, what they've done, and where I can help them, you know, reach their goals. And like you said, you know, maybe trying to figure out who's better at, at teaching the, the ground of the business versus performance. There are business coaches, there are per, uh, performance coaches, and then there's people that do both. It's important to me working with newbies to um, teach them everything along the way. So that we're not just doing performance, performance, and all of a sudden they're like performance ready. And then boom, they go hire, you know, an, an amazing demo producer. Now they have the performance in the demo, but if they haven't done all the groundwork on everything else, where is that demo going to live? What does your brand look like? How are you going to reach out to people? You know, so uh, that's why I kind of help people along the way with where's your website? Who are you working with? Have you researched your brands? Who did you hire to do that? Because keep in mind, you do have to hire a team of people to help you out. There are some things that can be done by yourself. I mean, my first website I did by myself, but yeah. then smartly about, I don't know, a little over a year later, I contacted voice, voiceactorwebsites.com. And they did my second website and they specialize in websites for voice actors. I mean, that is the right choice for me because I consider myself at this point a voice actor. That is what I am seeking to get paid to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're great. Karin and Joe, um, they're a really great team. And that's also a great place to go and kind of shop demos because yes. they have produced websites for so many top pros. So yes. you can just kind of go and uh, so that's what I tell everybody on the first phone call. Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Look around. Not only look and see what is appealing to your eye on websites, but listen to demos. Because you already have a whole bucket of pros there <laughs> to choose from. And join Late Night Secrets for voiceover success. Yes. Honestly, the website, not the website, my webinar series, I'm so proud of what it's become. It's been three years now that we've been doing it. We, I say we, because me and my dog, I guess, because it's really just <laughs> me doing it. But I say we, because there's so many other people involved, um, like Sarah Mitchell, the British, the British diva. She's my moderator, so she's always there. And I have amazing guests. Well, I had Karen Gilfrey on this week. But... Zoom was drunk, I guess. I don't know. Zoom Zoom had had a long week and kept kicking everybody out. 
So we rescheduled that one. But I've had folks like Celia Siegel, Karen Gilfrey, Tom Deere, uh, David Toback with the GVAA Rate Guide. Maria Pendolino has been on talking about her millennial reads and uh, negotiations. Larry Hudson has has been on talking about um, different performance aspects as well as editing aspects on how to do great editing. George Washington came on, uh, one of my favorite webinars. Uh, George Washington, we talked about the Black Lives Matter movement, and he is such an eloquent speaker, and everybody felt so empowered when we were done. It was amazing. So I'm loving the webinar series. It's just once a month, and all I do is ask a pro to pop on and share some of their expertise. And they've taught a lot. I'm so thankful for for those people. Yeah, I believe that's how I found my current medical narration coach, Debbie Irwin. Yes. I think I saw her for the first time on your Late Night Secrets webinar series. She was fantastic. She's a great coach. But what I really got to see was how she teaches. Mm -hmm. You can get references from people. They can talk her up. But to see how she teaches, how she organizes information, Mm -hmm. how she talks. And if you as a person identify with that, that's important because I was kind of looking for a new medical narration coach and there she was. And then I saw Mm -hmm. her again at eVocation last fall. Again, love the way that she explained things. And right after that, I started coaching with her. And Mm -hmm. I believe she gave me a discount because of Late Night Secrets because I was on there. Uh... So thank you, Rhonda. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. And thank you, Debbie Irwin. Yeah, Debbie's great when it comes to medical stuff. And she did a really great webinar just kind of explaining because genres is is kind of a crazy thing. People don't actually stop and think of all the places that you can use your voice. You know, medical narration is something that I leave to you, the (laughs) pharmacist's voice. Well, you're welcome. Because honestly, I would just want to punch myself in the face over and over again, looking up and trying to pronounce, because I've been there before, where you're like, Okay, well, I got to go look that up. (laughs) And then you listen and you're like, oh, it's not as bad as it sounds. And you go back in the studio and you're like, how did you say that again? Go back and listen to it. And then you have to put it in a sentence. No, that's your job. That's your job, Kim. And I love it. (laughs) I'm glad you do because, uh, see, that's the beautiful thing about voiceover. (laughs) You can really choose what you're good at and get paid for it. That's, That's pretty good. But, of course, some people are good at a lot of things. You know, I don't do audiobooks because I have the attention span of a small mosquito. <laughs> uh, I, I do long form narration, but I don't do, you know, like an eight hour audiobook just sounds like, I don't torture to me. Other people are like, that's their bliss. Yeah. So yay for them. Yes, for those people. Because if it were up to me, there wouldn't be a lot of audiobooks in the world. <laughs> People like Mike Lenz. Let's just send them all to Mike Lenz. He can he can do all that stuff. Yep. He seems to really be doing well. I think he's got well over 100 books at this point. It just seems like he's pumping out a book a week. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just admire that. I just admire that. Now, e-learning, guys, e-learning is where it is at. If you don't think, if you're thinking, I want to get into voiceover. I really want to be that commercial voice. I want to be Nike's commercial voice. I love your dream. I love your dream. And I want to hold your hand until we can get to that dream, right? Um, But e-learning is going to pay you bills, going to pay you mortgage. (laughs) Yeah. And it's a multi-billion dollar, I mean, multi-billion dollar industry. So, you know, don't discount that. I've had people come and say, well, I've, I've made people laugh with my voice my whole life. Great. Animation may be your thing. Then I find them an animation coach because I don't live that world. So not all coaches do all things. Um, What do you specialize in as a coach? I coach for commercial e-learning, explainers, um, narration, some narration, not long form narration, uh, IVR on hold. So I do kind of all of the, the general stuff. I don't do animation, anime, video games, medical, all of those. Yeah. Medical. That's a dirty (laughs) word in this house. That's a dirty word. We don't do med. We don't do medical in this house. Yeah. Would you say that in the industry, 
it, it's kind of a no BS industry. Your voice is well suited for what it's suited for, and people will hire you for what they think your voice sounds good for. Would you agree with that? Yeah, sure. I would agree with that. Right. I don't think anybody would listen to my demo and think, which I only have a medical narration demo at this point. I really should get a commercial one, but mm -hmm. hey, one thing at a time. But I don't think anybody's going to come to my website and try to hire me to do animation because I really have a passion for medical and I think they can hear that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, why? I don't know. I don't, do you have any funny medical things on you that would say? Although I do, I actually have something <laughs> funny on my demo and it's about Zinfandel and I make it sound like it's an antidepressant. <laughs> <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love a little comedy on every kind of demo. So I love yeah. that. I have and David Rosenthal good. to thank for that. He was my my medical narration coach, first medical narration coach, and he helped me with that demo. It was fun. Awesome. And now Debbie and I are going to be working with Tim Keenan for my second medical narration demo. Oh, nice. Tim's so fun. You're going to love working with Tim. Tim's Looking a lot forward of, to it. Tim, Tim's a lot of fun. I asked him to stick something into uh, into our e-learning demo, if we ever get that far, about motorcycles too. And I think he said that Yamaha is really big in his part of the U.S. So I am looking forward to getting around to that because I would love to do something with motorcycles too. I have passions and I think you can hear- Tell me. Your, yeah, oh. Motorcycles are your yeah. passion? Kim. I enjoy motorcycles. Yeah, I'm on bike number five. I, right now I have, yeah, <laughs> my first one was a Honda Shadow VLX 600. So I've always been into small engine bikes and I, I wouldn't mind having a large one. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And what was the second one? Who knew you were a motorcycle Kimco riding Kimco Super 8 150. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I like dirt bikes, quads, motorcycles, but it's from growing up out in the country. I mean, you and I are country girls, right? Yep. Yep. I had a motorcycle normal. when I was young too. I had a dirt bike. Yeah. Out of Yamaha, matter of fact. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, it's just fun. It's fun. And it's it gets me away from the house, away from the kids, out with friends. I get to go to bike shows and see what's new, do a little bit of pe people watching. That's it's awesome. Fun. No, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I would love to hear a I'd love to hear a Yamaha commercial out of you. Yeah. Thank you. I have a little bit awesome. of a spring cold right now, so it's not going to be today, but yeah, one of these days, I'll have to send it to you once it's recorded and say, you know, this is it. I would love it. I would absolutely love it. So if people, if people want to um, get subscribed to Late Night Secrets, I don't berate you, I promise, with a bunch of emails. I send out a couple of emails a month just on who's coming up, any coupon codes that I might be finding in the industry or just, you know, uh, whatnot. But it's usually the last Wednesday of every month. We do Late Night Secrets and it's $15 for the webinar and you get a replay. And then a lot of the replays are also for sale. Uh, and, and any money that is raised on those replays are go into a slush fund for some charity work. So I donate all that money. Rhonda, how does somebody subscribe to Late Night Secrets? They just have to head over to my website at rondasvoice.com, and there's a Late Night Secrets tab right there in the top. You can subscribe. You can uh, see upcoming events. I also have my coaching there. I have opened up some group coaching options. Uh, I did heavy group coaching last year uh, with only the students that I had worked with and absolutely loved it. Uh, and so... You can see group coaching there, so you can schedule, you can see upcoming guests, and you can register uh, for the webinars. I think I saw that you have general group coaching, performance coaching, and you have beginner group performance coaching. What's the difference? How does somebody know which one's right for them? Well, for the beginner one, I really kind of talk a little bit uh, more basic about how to break the scripts down and how to get yourself set up with a good roadmap. And we talk a lot about breathing techniques and just some of the real basic things. In the general classes, we still talk about some of the basics as we move through the performances. But in the general, we kind of talk about everything. So we'll work on maybe some on hold and some IVR and some explainer and maybe a commercial. Uh, so we just kind of work through various things. And we really try to work with getting you to use a different part of 
your vocal placement, your tone, your energy, your smile, you know, straightforwardness, happiness. We kind of work through all the different emotions, some core acting stuff. Uh, and then I also have an e-learning one that all we do is e-learning scripts. And so beginners, beginners can actually hop into the general class as well. Okay. Um, but just so you know, the I like in the beginners class, some people just feel very intimidated if they think they're going to be in a room with somebody that's been working on this for two or three years versus – you know, I just got started three months ago. So that's what the beginner classes are all about. So it's just a safe space to work with other beginners. Very good. And do you have a way where they know which one to go into? I mean, do you have criteria listed? Have you, no. have, do you have a way of telling, <laughs> grouping them <laughs> so they know which one to go into? Because, you know, I have a little bit of imposter syndrome. So I would tend to go into the beginner one for at least one session to see mm -hmm. where I'm at. And then you as a good coach would say, knock it off, Kim, go over to the general. <laughs> yeah. Knock it off, Kim, go over to the general. Uh, just because you already have a demo, you've worked with some coaches, you know, the, uh, you, you have a DAW, you understand how to record. So your knowledge of the industry in general is f further advanced than a beginner for sure. Um, so it's kind of difficult to say, beginners, you have to be in six months or less because some people have been working at this for a year and they still feel like they're a beginner just because they haven't had consistent work or maybe they're just taking a class here or a class there. So I, I don't want anybody to get tripped up on the words. You know, if you're in a class and you, you know, 15 or 30 minutes in, you realize, well, maybe I should be in the other class. Huh, then we'll just move you over to the other class. You know, no big deal. But the beginner is going to be just breaking it down just a little bit more, maybe taking it a little slower, maybe actually doing, you know, sentence by sentence um, and, and maybe taking one sentence and working on how to do it three different ways. Because, you know, we always got that. Can you give it to me one more time different? Yeah. When I audition, sometimes I do it three different ways myself because it's a choice. What, mm -hmm. How you deliver a line is a choice. And you can do it very formal and stuffy, and then you can put a little bit more energy and smile into it. Or you can do it a little bit more millennial. You know, there's different choices you can make. Uh -huh. And what you're talking about in the group coaching is giving people, opening their eyes to the different delivery styles. Yeah. And actually learning from the other people in the room. This is what all, all the people, not all the... All the people say this. All the people. <laughs> anyway, some of the people have come and said that that's one of the reasons that they like group coaching so much is that they learn how other people take direction and they can see how things are moving and changing in the script. They learn better self-direction. They learn how to give honest, positive feedback. And they learn how to give some basics um, of direction because I always ask everybody in the room for feedback on other people's reads. So I think it's a, a matter of also learning what you like to hear versus, oh, I would have done that a little differently. Why? And let's hear it. That'd be great. Uh, and and so like you said, imposter syndrome, 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 <laughs> it's not even late in the day and I'm already saying things wrong. Um we all have it. I have it. I, I know people that have been in the industry even longer than me. And sometimes they're like, when are they going to figure out that I don't know what I'm doing? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've had that thought before too. Well, when you audition, here's the thing. When you audition as much as we do, you know, you audition a hundred times and you get a certain percentage of them low, like 5% or less. I, I don't know about you. Everybody's different. So we don't mm -hmm. need to share, but it feeds into that imposter syndrome because you create something that you personally mm -hmm. think is great. You put mm -hmm. it out into the world. The casting agent decides whether they're going to even listen to it. And when they do listen to it, they don't give you feedback, right? Mm -hmm. And you just wonder, what happened? Why wasn't it good enough? You just know you didn't get that job. And you have to move on and have a short memory about it because tomorrow's another day. There's another five or 10 auditions waiting for you the next day. Move on. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to book everything. Right. So, and sometimes I even have even heard people um, say, that's who they booked. That's not what the specs asked for. You know, um, well, maybe that guy went outside the specs a little bit. And maybe that guy gave them something they didn't know they wanted to hear mm -hmm. until they heard it. You Good know, point. I don't book all my jobs. 
But the thing is, the really, really important thing, if I have anything more important to say today, is run your own race. Just because you see somebody on Facebook saying, look at me, look what I can do. You know, I go back to days of Stuart. Look what I can do, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> um, so, yay, good for you. But don't let their success dampen your own success, right? Sometimes things aren't always as they appear on Facebook and social media. You know, some people are just really, really great at social media. And they're great at painting the picture of what, look what I can do, right? Don't pay attention to those people. And when you do see their stuff, cheer for them and say, great for you. I'm going to do that too. Versus that person gets everything. You know, we can always get into the snarky, you know, shoulder bitey kind of things going on. But you can't determine your success by looking at anyone else, especially online, right? Uh, and so if you see somebody that's absolutely killing it in the industry, reach out to them. We are really nice people, voiceover people. I would agree. In, mostly, you know. Um, I do see some things in Facebook groups that I don't love. And that's why I'm not huge on Facebook. Um, I think sometimes pros can be less than kind to newbies. And there's no place in my life for that. <laughs> and so, you know, just like my mama always, you know, you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And kind of the same thing in, in voiceover. If somebody asks an innocent question, instead of saying, well, in my day, you maybe just answer their question. That'd be nice. Uh, so d run your own race. That's the most important thing. Because just because you're struggling, this is a, a something that I've put out in the world before. Just because you're struggling doesn't mean that you're failing. So today, if you're struggling with that audition today or that job, I, I worked with three of my students yesterday that had booked jobs and that came back that they didn't love their deliveries. Then let's change the delivery. It's changeable. Let's change it and move it and do it until they're happy. Because that's our job is to make other people happy right? Yes. And then to reach out for help if you need it. There's tons of coaches, tons of mentors. There's tons of people out there that can answer your, your questions. Don't, don't be afraid to reach out, like reach out to me. You can reach out to me if you want to. I'm a pretty nice lady. Absolutely. I back that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm glad somebody, somebody thinks I'm nice today. That's nice. Now, how would somebody tell if they should be doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with you or group coaching? Oh, that's a good one. I think group coaching is good for getting the nerves out, um, making some friends, to be truthful. It's kind of nice in my groups. I've had several people that meet other newbies or other uh, people in the group, and then they start an accountability group. So it's, it's, it's a nice way. I think one-on-one -on -one coaching is important for everybody at, at some point in time, you're going to need one-on-one -on -one coaching, even if, you know, for, for specific things. So if you want audiobooks, you might need an audiobook coach, uh, you know, different things. If you're great at commercial and you've learned that, you still might need a different coach um, for another genre that, that you're looking into. I think the group coaching for me is just kind of the bow on a package. So you kind of already know what you're doing, and it's a good val validation too, to, to pop in and be able to do what you do and, and hear other people's positive feedback, which is always nice. Rhonda, what I heard you say was that maybe somebody should try individual coaching before they go to group coaching. Is that right? Uh, yeah, they can try that or they can hop into group coaching and just kind of see what it's about and then book one-on-one -on -one coaching. Either way is fine. I don't think there's an, any right or wrong way um, to cut. Well, let me back up. There is a wrong way to walk in the door, and that's backward. Don't walk in the door backward. Walk in the door with um, knowledge that you know what you're doing and that you understand the yellow brick road, how wide it is, how long it is, how many bumps there are. Are there going to be any scary things along the way? You know, that's what a coach is going to help you is to get you from this end to the goal at the end of the yellow brick road. Now, can I do that for somebody 
sometimes. A lot of times I'm like, nope, you need to go talk to Johnny Heller. You need to go, (laughs) you need to talk to Debbie Irwin. You need to, you know, whoever the coaches are covering things that, you know, I don't cover. It takes a village. It really takes a village. Right. And once you start coaching, you really should continue it. And as long as you're a performer, really, that's what I've heard. And that's what I believe in. You don't Mm -hmm. reach a finish line of coaching. There's always something you can learn. Absolutely. Like I just got my, um, in our town, we have a college that does lifestyle programs for the summer. So you can go take a college course during the summer. They have acting, they have improv, um, they have script writing, they have, you know, things like that. Improv is a really great thing to do if you're a voice actor. Why? Because it just helps you get outside and get the nerves out and it helps you, um, be a fast thinker and if you know to to get things moving. So if you have the opportunity to take a basic acting class or anything a toastmaster is also really good. Anything that gets you used to making eye contact, getting comfortable in your own body, getting used to saying words will help and that's something you can do forever. Those are all great suggestions. I'm in toastmasters. I've done improv. I need to do more improv. I've done coaching. Yeah, all of those things are great because like you said, they get you using your voice, get you used to it. And not everybody goes the same path. And I just want to say that all paths are valid as long as you get your training, your demos, you're out there, you're getting paid work. People want to hire you. So Mm -hmm. I think we can both agree that there's more than one way to get into voiceover. There's more than one way. There's lots of ways, but do it the right way. Yes. Okay. Do not do it this way. Do not go and pay $400 to be on a pay to play site, then get your microphone, then decide to start doing auditions. Because when you do that, you're already out a bunch of monies. And by the way, pay to play sites are packed with pros. Yes. So just because you get your $400 membership on whatever pay to play site, Keep in mind that you are competing with people that have been in the industry for a while, already have their professional demos, you know, so keep that in mind because heartbreak is around the corner if you're auditioning and you just don't know what you're doing uh, and and heartbreak. I don't want to, I don't want to pick up your pieces. I want to help you do it the right way. And so does every other coach out there, you know? Yes. Boy, knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. This is great. (laughs) I'm dropping them today, right? I hope I'm dropping good ones. (laughs) Yeah, you definitely are. Yes. Uh, One of the things that I talked about on episode 92 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast is that it's better to dip your toe in the water before diving in and making major purchases and time commitments. And what I just heard you say was all of that. And yeah, your yeah. introduction to voiceover online course is one of those ways. Could you talk a little bit about the course? The course is a three-hour self-paced course. You just sign up. It's uh, pre-recorded videos that I have put together. And we kind of go through this checklist of stuff that I talked about at the beginning of, uh, of the podcast, which is I, I take a brief look at all things and break them into two or three to five minute uh, pieces. So when we talk about studios, you get to see pictures of professional studios, studio bricks, uh, you know, whisper rooms and things like that. Everything to, you know, the booth with the blankets hanging around or a pillow fort uh, and things like that. And so it it just really does kind of cover the business of the business so that you're walking in knowing this is a business. I'm going to be a voiceover business, not just a voice actor. And getting all those little pieces into place can feel really frustrating because like you said, you built your own website and then a year later realized Maybe it needs to be better, faster, stronger. So I'm going to hire somebody to do that. You can absolutely start doing a lot of these things yourself, just knowing that you've got to save your pennies because demo production is not cheap, right? Right. Um, So through the course, you just kind of learn the basics of all the things you're going to need to look at. And a lot of things do have to be done in tandem which can feel overwhelming. So while I'm coaching with you doing performance stuff, I'm going to need to be thinking about my website, which is a big thing to think about. 
color schemes. How's it going to move? In this day and age in websites, there's a million things available. Uh, you know, so for me, it's just the overall picture. Introduction to voiceover.com is an umbrella look at the industry, basically. Very good. I'm glad it's out there because I have recommended it to many people. In truth, I have not taken it myself, but what you talk about on the landing page for it is exactly what people need to know about the rabbit holes and that it's a business and you can't just buy a mic and join a pay to play site and call yourself a professional. And I would caution people about mouth noises and things like that too. I mean, you probably talk about all that, right? Yes. Yeah, sibilance is a thing. Dry mouth is a thing. Um, Learning how to use your software properly to help you with that is also a thing, you know, because I suffer with dry mouth. I live in the desert of Colorado. It is dry here. We have no humidity at all. Um, and I'm a water drinker. I literally probably drink almost a gallon of water a day and my mouth is still dry. You know, some medications, I don't know, pharmacist, can some medications <laughs> dry out your mouth? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and Anti antihistamines, especially first generation, definitely. Well, yeah, and it is allergy season in almost anything that you take. So, um, but there are ways. There's like RX7, RX8, Isotope, you know, those are, are things that you can download for your software that help take that out in post after after you do your editing. But yeah, you have to think about stuff like that because when it starts popping into your audio and you don't know how to fix it or filter mm -hmm. it or fix it later, you're kind of in a world of hurt. <laughs> well, you don't sound as competitive on those pay-to-plays to the people, the casting agents. They can tell. They can hear mouth noises. I don't know if that is something that would keep uh, an individual from getting a job, but I can only imagine that if what you are submitting is supposed to be representative of your final product, they can probably draw a correlation between this sample and the final sample also having mouth noises. So I would recommend knowing how to get rid of them. Oh yeah. And that's just learning your DAW, yep. your digital audio workstation, uh, you know, and how it works and, and having proper mic placement, having, you know, your mouth, the right proximity to, you know, are you talking directly straight into your mic? Probably not a great idea. A little offset, a little, you know, it shouldn't be right in front of your mouth. Uh, it's just stuff like that. Trial and error, unless you have somebody teaching you, you know, how to do it, then yeah, there's, there's a lot that goes in into all of this. Another thing is you have to be as good as your demo, which is something that you kind of just touched on. So if you go to a recording studio and, and you do all of that there, and then you come home, you have to be able to recreate not only your performance, but your sound quality. So that's the importance of having a good studio and the ability to self-direct and bring things to life when you're not in front of a director in a studio. Good points. More knowledge bombs. Thanks, Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Hey, Rhonda, how do you know if somebody is coachable? Oof, that is a tough question. I think everybody is coachable, depending on how open they are to feedback, how positive they are with work, because it's really dis so easy to get discouraged. Because I've read this line three times and you're not happy with any of them. So it, it, it does take patience, tons and tons of patience. And being able to understand someone's direction and, and put that direction into action, right? So if, I, if I'm asking you to put uh, an up inflection on a word, so we're going to say this, or make it musical, this, or go down, this. You know, so I just need you to be able to do the things that I'm asking. Um, not every coach is great for every student. I've had folks that we work beautifully together. Other people, I don't know. It's just we're humans. So some people respond better. So if you're with a coach and you don't feel like you're getting what you need from them, either they're not under explaining things really well, you're not understanding it, that's okay. So I want everybody to know if you're struggling, you just not, might not have the right coach. And this is a business. If you don't think you have the right coach, you're not getting what you need, ask or say something. 
I would much rather a student say, I'm not sure that I'm understanding or I'm getting what I need out of the sessions, then I'm happy to help them find somebody else that might be a better fit for them. So you don't have to get stuck into coaching, but uh, that's a really tough question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Oh, that makes it a good question. That's a yes. really good question. Yes. Uh, and you, I think you know as a person too, how well you receive coaching. And it also depends how your coach approaches you. Some coaches are very direct. No, do it this way, that way. Uh, some coaches are very nurturing and kind. So it really, you have to find the coach that works best for you because I try to be on, on the more nurturing and kind, especially for newbies, you know, because you need to hug a lot in the beginning. And I'd hug everybody if I could, you know, <laughs> I'm vaccinated. So look out world. I'm hugging. <laughs> if you don't want to hug, you sure turn around and run probably from me. Um, but, you know, everybody learns differently. So some people may need that more direct approach. Like, no, this is the way you do it. You're not doing you know, a little bit more stern. So you just got to find the person that I think you respond to and that you can take their feedback, not negatively. Because sometimes as a coach, it can be difficult. You feel like I'm beating you up <laughs> a little bit. Um, but I'm beating you up with love. It all comes from a place of caring, you know. So did I answer your question? You totally did. Yes. <laughs> I, I think anybody that's looking to go into voiceover needs to go in with the mindset that not only am I looking for a coach and I need coaching, I need to be coachable because it goes yes. both ways, right? Absolutely. You know, if you go to your track coach and you're like, I'm the best runner in the world and they can't improve on you, then you're not, you don't have you're not the best and neither is the coach that you're working with probably. So everybody's coachable. It's how much you want it and how much you want to learn and how much you, and how much you retain. Ah, uh, true. That's a huge part is how much you retain and how much you beat yourself up in the studio or don't beat yourself up in the studio. How many times do you do that line? You know, I have a 30 second commercial and pretty soon I have 20 minutes of audio. That might be a problem. <laughs> that's good. But that's the plenty. newbie. But well, but that's a lot of times a lot of people get stuck in that rut. Oh. But newbies, especially when you get in that rut, and you're not sure how to get out to make it sound different. Right. So you got to figure out how to make that turn and jump the rut. <laughs> right. Well, I think some great advice is it's all about getting it right for the client. It's not about us being right as the performer because our choices that we make, our emotion that we put into it, the way that we say a line may not be right for the client. So getting mm -hmm. it right is more important than being right. And I think that helps make a performer coachable. Yeah, because you're you have to make them happy, not yourself happy. Because sometimes they're like, no, do it this way. And I'm thinking to myself, but wouldn't it sound better this way? Well, that can be your wild take, you know, but if they're telling me to do it this way, then that's the way they want to hear it. It's my job to do that. Right. So you got to work until you make them happy, not you work until you make yourself happy. Right. Well, you probably want to try to make both of you happy. Yeah. Ideally, that does happen. Yeah. <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Rhonda, this has been so much fun. I have personally learned quite a bit, and I'm sure my listeners will appreciate this. You totally answered the question, how do I get into voiceover? Thank you. And is there anything else you'd like to share as we wrap this up? No, I just love it if people would subscribe to Late Night Secrets for voiceover success. You can also hop on. There's a group. Um, there, I also have a page. I'm not good at the page because... My post reaches were getting to like six people. So join the group if 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 you can. It's not a super active group or anything. I, I just post my upcoming um, webinars. Oh, I have Roy Samuelson coming up. Who's Roy Samuelson, you might ask? <laughs> he is amazing big time audio description guy. I don't have a date set yet, but it will be at the end of June. So if you want to learn about audio description for the blind and how that works, uh, I'll have that information up on my website next week, probably. Awesome. And your website, one more time. 
rondasvoice.com. And the late night secret stuff is all under one late night secrets tab. And you can book coaching as well on there if you'd like. Very good. Well, thank you again so much for being on the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Have a great weekend. Thanks. You too, Kim. Thank you for joining me for episode 99 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Best of luck to all the newbies in the industry. As a late beginner myself, I know this episode has a lot of value. I want to say thank you again to Rhonda Phillips for being my guest today. You were awesome. Knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. If you are interested in the VO legal book that Rhonda mentioned, visit voiceoverextra.com forward slash ebook.htm and use the coupon code RONDA at checkout. That's all capitals, R-H-O-N-D-A, RONDA. Thank you to John Florian at Voiceover Extra for the link and the coupon code. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to subscribe and read the show notes. The websites and links mentioned in this episode are in those show notes. Enjoy. Enjoy.